Hi, this is a watercolour flamingo tutorial for my granddaughter Freya. Um, I hope everyone else enjoys it. Freya, I hope you do. I'm using um, a reference photo from Pixabay, uh, which is, you can Google Pixabay, they've got lots of good free reference photos. I've done a sketch. The colours I'm going to use, I think, I'm not quite decided yet, but I've got um, some opera rose, some deep scarlet, some yellow ochre. Um, I'm going to use some moon glow for some of the shading, which is a Daniel Smith colour. Um, and I'll probably use a bit of Payne's grey for the um, black and beak um, and I'm not quite sure about how I'm going to do the leg yet but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You don't have to do exactly the same colours that are on the reference photo. I mean this one's quite a peachy looking colour but you get some flamingos that are white, some that are bright pink. I had a play with mixing some colours earlier. You can see I looked at Opera Rose, Permanent Rose, Rodendite, Genuine, Deep Scarlet. And then I had a go at mixing them. And I quite like this colour here, which was a mix of the Opera Rose and the Deep Scarlet. And then I was looking at which colour to use for the beak as well. And I think I'm going to use the Payne's Grey. Ignore the blue, it's just a scrap paper, scribbles. So, you also need some water, some kitchen roll. The brushes I'm going to use are a size 8 and a size 2. Um, I've also got um, quite a stiff brush for doing some spluttering. You can use a toothbrush. Um, or any old paintbrush really, but if it's quite a hard bristle one, you get a better effect. So I'm going to start by putting the base of the pink on. So I am just going to put water to begin with. So I've loaded my brush with water and I'm just going to go along the top line and down the neck. Notice my pencil marks are quite light. I probably would have had them lighter, but you wouldn't be able to see them if I did that. So good. Not too puddly, but you can see the reflection there. There is a good, good amount of water on there. And then I might do a bit of opera rose with a little bit of yellow opera gets it quite peachy I think gets a little bit of the pink and then just drop it in just come down the outside with your concentrated colour the brush just add a bit more water and get that paint moving reference photo you notice that the forehead has got the light on it so I'm actually going to take a bit of that colour and lift it out a little bit just to get the light there and then it goes a bit darker here And 
It's a darker there, but we'll worry about that. and then some darker put some of this scarlet in for darker bits and come back once that's dry you need to be putting your brushes in the direction that the feathers are going in. So on the picture you can see there's lots of different tones. So on the bottom here I'm just going to mix in lots of different tones. And then I'm going to put water on. And again the feathers are kind of going down so I'm going to Put a little bit of colour on so you can see the way I'm doing that. Just swishing those feathers down over the leg there. These ones kind of come along and his belly goes underneath that leg there. water and I'm going to drop in some more colour so big mix it's got lots of different colour feathers and these ones kind of go up that way so a bit of flicking up as well that all comes down that way. Well, I've got quite a bit of darker. underneath there. which is I say I'm going to add keep adding layering as we go that's our first Probably gone a bit too far along looking at the reference photo. It not have to be completely accurate. Now, while we're still on splotchiness in the direction of the, that the feathers are going, you need to do your splatter. Nice bit of splatter, and then we could just have a few splodges just for good luck. And then while all that's drying and doing its thing, let's work on the beak now if you look on the reference photo you'll notice it's slightly pink with black at the end so we're going to go with some really kind of watered down 
for a rose and just put that in there like that and then I'll get my Payne's Grey I don't want it too wet mark at the top it doesn't have to be a hundred percent accurate you know the last thing about flamingos is if you get them halfway accurate it still looks like a flamingo so i'd quite like that to be a bit looser so i'm just going to drop some water in there and loosen that up a bit that's a bit softer and then with a little bit of Payne's Grey I'm just gonna come along here with my little brush and then you'll notice there's a, a nostril kind of thing so you can do a line and clean your brush and then just pull the bottom of that line out a little bit and it'll look softer and more like a nostril. And again we'll come back to that and the shading. Now the other thing on the reference photo is the eye is slightly yellowing so let's go in with a little bit of that yellow ochre around the eye and also in the eye let's open the reference picture down to have a look a bit more And then I think with my Moon Glow, not with my Payne's Grey. I'm just going to... I not quite got the right shape of his mouth. the eye so the eye comes kind of up circle around the eye and then you've got the actual pupil as well I don't know how well you can see that hopefully you can see it now not too happy with the top of his eye so I'm gonna drop a bit of colour in there If you look on the reference photo, you can read it. It has a bit of shading on the top half. And then we want to shade this bit here. So again, get some more 
define the color. I'm going to lift some of this colour at the front because that's where the sun is. So I'm just getting some water, just popping it in and dabbing it off there. Just shows that the sun's coming from that direction. And then we've got a kind of bump here. So I'm just lifting that bit off as well. And then I am going to go in on that nostril again. I think that this time with the moon glow instead. Looks a bit better. It isn't dry enough yet to do. So under here. Some shading. So, so I'm using a bit of moon glow and with a bit of darker colour paint as well. And then to kind of set Right, this moon glow is brilliant for shadows. So I tend to put a bit on and then kind of lift off into it and that will give the effect of that bit of hair coming over and the shadow underneath. And then I need a little bit of shadow under the eye. Like that. Happy with that now. I think I'll leave the eye. Come back to that in a moment. So let's have a look at his legs now. They're almost white, pinky, grey, so that's going to be quite tough. So I think we're going to go in with a maybe a bit of moon glow and just do them with moon glow. So that's a, I actually need to do because there's a bit of feather at the top there, so we'll, we'll do that bit in a sec. We're not going to go all the way down either, we're just going to give a hint of his leg. Oh, that's quite faint under there. It's got kind of lines coming around. And then let's just do his toes. Kind of colour them in first. And then we're going to go in. with the darker to give the definition. Kind of see, but you can't. 
can't say. It comes out the end there and goes around. I am not going to make it too obvious though. probably want him standing in some water so we could get another colour and do some water but it's going to have a pink shadow so I might get a bigger brush first. so whatever colour you water you are going to get a shadow of some sort. And let's put a bit of moon glare around the bottom. Um, there it more or less is. I, mean, I would keep going uh, with this one and probably put in some of the shading. If you look on your reference photo, you put some shading here. So to make that look like that neck is coming down a bit and then you've got shading there. And you just look for the other places where, where there's more shading, which again is under, under these feathers here. There's a bit more shading. Which, as I say, moon glow is the colour for putting your shading in. It doesn't seem to like mixing with opera rose, so let's not use opera rose again. Doesn't seem very happy mixing with it. So you can go in and just put as much and as little extra detail in and extra shading in. This tummy needs a bit extra. See, I can't stop now. I'll just start. Just to show that his tummy's there. And you might want some extra kind of feather definition. You don't want it. I'm going to overwork it. And then I think just under the top of his foot now. Okay, so hopefully you can have some fun splashing and messing around making a flamingo. I hope you've enjoyed it.